Hey Surfix a lot here. I'm going to show you how to change out a radiator and expansion tank on a BMW 330i. This will work for all E46 BMWs. This is all a 3 series from 1999 to through, through 2005. And I've got a couple extra parts here um, simply because the car has over 120,000 miles on it. Um, radiator isn't leaking yet, but uh, there are parts of the expansion tank that aren't doing so well. So um, while I'm in there doing the expansion tank, um, I'll show you how to pull the radiator. I'll also point out some areas around the water pump and thermostat just in case you want to change those. I had changed them in the car less than uh, 40,000 miles ago or probably around 30,000 miles ago and they're usually good for at least 60 to 70,000 miles. So. I know that the uh, water pump and thermostat are fine. So here are the units. You're going to need the expansion tank here. This is an actual BMW uh, original. Actually, all these parts are uh, BMW um, parts. This is actually a bracket. You don't necessarily need to replace this, but I ordered it anyway. Um, you'll see right here is the radiator or part of the radiator and um, this is going to sit it's actually upside down but I'm going to show you how it goes together um, something like this it's going to mount here and then these are pieces of the system um, this is going to snap in like this and be supported by a bracket here like that um, I'll show you the pieces when they come out the other thing I'm going to do is replace my fan, I guess this um, housing. Um, I had some some cracks along the top here on mine, so I'm going to replace it with a brand new one. These are relatively inexpensive. Then we've got the upper radiator hose, and then this is the uh, this is the lower radiator hose. Going to sit something like this. Um, again, both these are. BMW. This is a peek into the area that's leaking down around here. You'll see a lot of radiator or dried radiator fluid. First things first, you're going to want to remove the under tray. This under tray is held on by seven screws. You just turn these a half turn and then they'll the whole bottom tray will come out of the bottom and then you'll go ahead and drain uh, the radiator from the bottom. Alright, first thing you're going to want to do is remove the air box as well as uh, this air plenum. So there's standard hose clamp on this side. Flip. Okay, this should come out complete. Okay. And these are held on by just these three pin. Push pin setups. 
and then this comes off. Now the fan and this housing, once you disconnect some of the electrical connections here, and take out these two, two units off to the side, is you'll need a 32 millimeter open and then just tap it lightly with a mallet in a clockwise direction and then the fan should spin off and then this unit will come straight off along with the fan. Okay, once you have these two fasteners out, there's one here pushpin fastener that goes here and there's a Torx fastener on the other side. Once those are out and your fan is off, you just kind of lift both of them out at the same time. Like this. Now I hate to do a handheld on you here, but on the passenger side, there's one electrical clip here, and then there's one clip for the hose that you just you undo the electrical clip, and then you'd undo the clip here, and then the hose will actually disconnect from the radiator. Then on the driver's side, there's a there's this unit here from the transmission, I believe, and you need to lift up on this release here and then there's another release here for the expansion tank and so those two need to be released this will pull away and then you can kind of see this new this bracket that we're going to be replacing we're replacing this entire bracket as well as this expansion tank and there's an electrical connection on the bottom of the expansion tank that you have to release also and then finally up here there are there's a clip here and a clip here to disconnect the upper hose. You saw me disconnect where to disconnect the lower hose. And then there is a Torx fastener right in here that you have to do to release the radiator completely. Okay, you're going to want to remove the old bottom bracket off the old radiator and then put it onto the new one. It's pretty simple. You just uh, pull on two tabs here. Push down on these two tabs and then flip it, flip it upwards like that and out. And then just come to the new one and it's in it's in reverse order. You just set it into the holes. and then put it in. Next, we're gonna assemble the side bracket. You're gonna have to put on the anti-siphon valve that I'm gonna take off the old one, place it in the new one. It's just an O-ring press fit. And then uh, there's a press fit at the bottom down here for an o another O-ring. And then there's a Torx fastener on the side, which I'll take off of that one over there and then put it on here. Again, excuse the handheld here, but uh, this is the radiator put in. You should have the long Torx fastener here and the short one on the other side. Um, on the sides of the radiator itself, you should find like a slot where this actually pushes forward. 
on both sides and it rests on a perch and that's how the radiator sits and then when it's installed it should be firm both top and uh, down there at the bottom and you can see that I've got the bracket already pre-installed and then we're going to go ahead and assemble the rest. Okay this is the lower radiator hose and you can snap it in since it's brand new just make sure that the, the brackets are fully down on both ends and then they'll go ahead and pop right in on onto the engine and then onto the new radiator. Uh, they have new o-rings inside of them so you don't have to worry about any leakage there. Um, what you do have to do is remove this lower sensor and it's basically squeezing it on the side and twisting it, pulling it out and then reinserting it onto here. It's, it's keyed on one end so you, you, you can't miss as far as uh, inserting it. What you should do is just make sure that the o-ring is in good shape and everything's cleaned up so I'm going to go ahead and rinse it before actually inserting it. Okay, once you have the transmission cooler hooked up down here, um, the radiator is basically all in and ready to go. Now we just work on the expansion tank here and there's a couple things we need to replace um, or switch over to the new one. So there's a new expansion tank. One is the sensor. This has to go over. I'll clean it up first. Make sure there's no debris on it but because it's under pressure. The sensor just twists on like that. The other thing snap ring. This just needs to go on to here. And what you do is it's a press fit. You just drop it into place. Down into here. And then just push it down until it snaps. And then that's how you install the expansion tank. Alright, this will give you a little better view. The expansion tank has a little hook which hooks in over here. Make sure you route it in to that spot. And it hooks in. Once you line it up, just press until it clicks, and that's all there is to it. Finally, you want to put on the upper radiator hose. Just kind of connect, make sure all the clips are down. And all the connections are clean. <laughs> Sorry. These two over here will connect at the same time. So, just kind of here snap like that, two snaps in this one, this is one snap, and there you have it. Now go ahead and fill up the system, um, you know of course put in your air box but fill up the system, put on a bottom pan, um, put in the fan again with the fan shroud hooked in properly and then um, you do a counterclockwise tightening with 32 millimeter um, for the fan and go ahead and fill it up, get it running, uh, get it running warm, and then just open up this valve here and it'll bleed until it spills out and then tighten the valve or tighten this screw back up and then you'll have bled the system completely um, from a fluid change perspective. Uh, and then you should be good to go. When, um, when it is full, When it is full, what you'll see in the expansion tank is this red little float will be at the top, like this, and that'll indicate that your expansion tank is full. And that's about it. Should be good to go.